They just do what they always do. Why is he you know, hitting like, Leo Komarov on the first line? Like, Welcome to the Rock. So, there's a lot of, every year it seems to be this way, but there's very prominent restricted free agents that are still unsigned into August, um, into September in some cases, you know, like Matt Barzell, uh, into training camp, uh, Nylander, uh, William Nylander a couple of years ago in Toronto. And it makes me wonder, should, I know they have the date of December 1st for an RFA to sign before, if they're eligible to play in the season, but should they make a date where RFAs have to sign by a certain date in the summer. Because if you think about it, it could be good for league-wide transactions. A lot of teams um, hold some moves, possibly you know, the Islanders may be one of them. But some teams hold back making moves until they have all their business in order and all their RFAs signed to finally determine how much cap space they have. And I think if you instituted a date, I'm just going to make one up, um, August 1st. Um, all restricted free agents have to be signed. Then teams, you, you know your full your full picture with the cap um, the rest of the summer. So if you have to make a trade leading up to training camp or before the season starts, you know you know your housekeeping. And a lot of these guys, I think, kind of hold up their teams in some ways. And in some ways, they also hold up some activity across the league. Like, especially in the prominent ones, you know, Elias Pettersson in Vancouver, Quinn Hughes, you know, Anthony Beauvillier, Ilya Sorokin. Um, and there's a much, there's much more that I just can't think of at the moment, top of my head, but there's a lot of prominent RFAs that are out there every season. And I think that the league, it's something that could benefit the league. Now, I know they have the December 1st deadline of where you need to sign before you can get locked out and you can't play. And that's good. But at that point, that doesn't help. That doesn't really help the team in terms of off-season moves. If the season already began, you already have to be cap compliant, et cetera. So um, while it's all well and good, I think they should have a date in the summer where these guys have to sign by. I think it's. I think it'd be good for the teams. I think it'd be good for the league. Um, and it's just something that you scratch your head and wonder. You know, does it really benefit anybody to have you know Elias Pettersson unsigned going into training camp? I don't think it does. Uh, and I think if you have a real deadline it will put a lot of pressure on these agents and teams to get things done. Cause right now all these players and teams, there's, there's no sense of urgency. There's no, there's no pressure. I mean, look at arbitration. When they come out with a list of players every year who filed for arbitration and how many of those cases actually get to where they have a hearing, what would you say? Maybe 10% of cases actually get to a hearing. No, again, it's because they have a drop dead date. They want to avoid, and you come and they come to an agreement. Happens every summer. So if there was an RFA deadline date where they had to be signed by, these guys that don't file arbitration, I can guarantee you, ninety-five percent of the time would be signed before that deadline. You're telling me Elias Pedersen wouldn't be wouldn't be signed right now if the if the date for him to sign was by tomorrow? No. But just do it. I think I think it would be good for everybody. You guys could chime in what you think. Yeah, um, I, I get what you're saying, and on paper it sounds great. It's just the players association would never go for that. They would never go for it, and I, I think we all know that. Um, it, it, you're just you're just making it harder on players. It, it, it gives leverage to teams at that point. You're, you're, you're taking away a contract uh, contract negotiation leverage tactic uh, for the player, and that's that's what it comes down to, and that's why the players most likely will never go for that. Um, would it make sense to move up that December deadline to maybe training camp? Sure, I mean that would that would be better. that would be better for the the team, yeah. But you're you're, you're taking away something from the player and. Maybe there's a middle ground to be had there. Maybe November first would be better. Um, I don't even know. Maybe October, the start of the season. I, I just I, I don't get how you can how you can do that to the players, and I don't see how the players would ever ever agree to that. So makes sense in theory. Just don't see it happening. Uh, yeah, I forgot that I muted because I was typing as you were uh, talking. Um, the uh, I, I think it's one of those that it makes sense to me 
what you're trying to say and to get it. Because by the way, uh, prolonged contract holdouts benefit no one. I don't think it does. I mean, usually it'll, if they know they're holding out, they're holding out an extra day or whatever isn't going to, isn't going to work. And uh, I'd, I'd rather have everybody signed as soon as possible. I actually agree with you in, in practice on this, but unfortunately I think John's right. I think it's going to take away a negotiating tactic from the, the players association. They don't want to do that. Um, which is, I, which is, what is, what does it take away? It takes away the threat of a holdout. Yeah, sure. But what is still a dead anyway? It's just, it's just, it's stupid. Like I, I understand you guys are right. The player, the, the PA would probably never go for it, but you know, in most cases, these guys are RFAs. I mean, it's not like they're established 10 year veterans. I mean, you'll get, you can get an elite player who's an RFA that's already had a bunch of success, but I mean, it's, it's, it's silly to me, but you're right. I know the PA wouldn't go for it, but I just think that whole, the leverage of being able to say, okay, well, if you don't give me what I want, I'll hold out and have a drag into camp. Doesn't the do whole system needs to change. Doesn't do anything for the team. Yeah. The, the entire system needs a change. It, it, it's screwed. His players don't get to decide to where they go until they're 27 years old at the very youngest. That's stupid. Players should be able to decide at 25 where they want to go. And yet, oh, well, that's not fair to the teams. Okay. Well, that's not fair to the players either. Okay. But uh, on the other hand with that, it's also like um, if, you, if we do that, we start reducing uh, where players uh, – when and where players decide to go, then you're going you're gonna to end up becoming the NBA. Okay. Like, so, then, so then reduce the term on, ma- on max contracts as well then. Instead of giving them seven years as free agents, give them five. And – and I know the players would never go for that, but you know they they've got to make a concession if they want to be able to choose where they want to go. So you know it, the negotiations are when both sides make a concession. That's a, that's when a deal is struck in in life in all walks. So give them <laughs> so give them the, <laughs> but <laughs> give give them. Give them the opportunity to choose where they want to go earlier, but give them lesser term on those max deals. You know, and if you want to, if you want to decide where you want to go, okay, lesser term then on a max deal. Change, change the RFA system, change the entry level system. Then at that point, allow players to get paid a little more on entry level deals. And the whole thing with the the NCAA holdouts, where they play the four years and then they're not under contract anymore, and they're free agents, and they decide where they want to go. The Euro, the the Euro leagues, it, it it sucks for European players, mainly the KHL, because the K. I was actually having this discussion the other day with Sat Boy Steven. We were we were talking about how a KHL player, because of the the transfer agreement and the fact that the NHL doesn't want to compensate for more than the first ten transfers per year, the K the KHL doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to give. Uh, the NHL more players and everything. It, it, it's terrible because they get screwed because they're losing so much money and talent on this. So if the NHL, who claims to make money hand over fist, and they were talking about all these record revenues from year year before COVID happened, if you can't give the NHL, if you can't give the KHL more money for the players that you're stealing from them, then don't talk about record profits because you know the transfer agreement could have been reworked. And this would be so much easier on KHL players. That's why you have guys like Sorokin and them that didn't want to come over until a certain age. And then they want to go right to restricted free agency because they don't want to play for what's considered peanuts to them in the NHL, making under a million dollars a year. When they can make three, four, five million dollars a year in the KHL at home and then come over to the NHL at a certain age and make more money. So, you know what? This whole system needs to be fixed. Like kind of how uh, Kirill Kaprizov is just bending Minnesota over a barrel, knowing, yes. hey, I got, I'm an RFA right now, but uh, I want my money or I, I want a short-term deal so I can get more money in three years. So, And then I decide where to go. In the meantime, Bill Guerin's going, but in three years, we're going to be able to pay you bigger money. Uh, and they might not be good for a few years. With them, so it's, I think they'll end up compromising. They might end up compromising at four years or so. I don't know. 
they're not they're not signing him to a seven or eight year deal. No way he's going to do that. It probably won't even do six. I mean, maybe if they do four and they up it to nine and a half, ten million, maybe he takes it. But yeah, it's going to be see what happens there. But before we move on to the next topic, um, let's also think about it like this. So Connor McDavid wins the MVP his second season or third season. Um, and Peter Shirelli hands him that huge deal. Let's say he doesn't. Let's say he says, I need you to sign like a $4 million bridge deal just because, I mean, after all, we already had a broken clavicle with you. There's some injury concerns. Now the NHL would go into a season. McDavid says, screw it. I'm holding out. So he holds out waiting for his next contract. And then we get another situation like Alexa Yashin, uh, Michael Pekka, uh, who held out a full season. Um, Yashin, did Yashin hold out two or just one? I, no, I, one. one. Okay. He, he, held, he held out the 99-2000 year and then ended up playing for Ottawa the next year anyway. And then he got traded. Yeah. Oh, okay. He yeah. Got, so he's, he had a, he had a, he had a held out year that was – yeah, he had a holdout year that was sandwiched between a 94-point season and an 88-point season. So, and then he ended up being dealt after that last year. So, so then you have your MVP, your face of the league, your young franchise player that you want to market everywhere, holding out. That's where I think Anthony's right about this, that the deadlines would actually be a good thing. Because now you can actually get these players signed, get them in the camp, or get or get solution. Or, or I mean... Or a resolution, I mean. Uh, like, what's the one thing we're complaining about with Jack Eichel? There's not a resolution in sight. We're, we're targeting four weeks from now. So now we got to hope that that's done by then, or it's going to be done by July 1st. And then it's after done by July 1st, then it's going to be Eichel with a no move clause. So awesome. We're, we got we could have potentially four more years of Jack Eichel rumors. So it's the, the, the deadline could work, Anthony. And I agree with it. I just don't see the, the players ever giving it up. But uh, what do you guys think? Uh, is Anthony onto something here? Uh, put it all down in the comments below. Leave us a like, share, and subscribe. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs>